Hello, family. Sorry for running late. Uh, that last little video I made, I edited it about six times. I showed it to Chloe and she was like, it sucks. And that's the kind of relationship we have because I need to be held accountable. If she was like, oh, it's great, do it. I would just put out crappy stuff always. But if I can get it through the Chloe filter, we're good. And then had a full meltdown because some Google thing and can't log into one, can't log into the other. You know, you got to put your password in 30 times. I'm like the old guy trying to program his VCR to watch, to record Matlock. <laughs> How do you do it? I can't. It's on ABC at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Matlock has a case he's going to crack. You guys don't know who Matlock is. You ain't old. I know Matlock. Me and Matlock, we go way back. To my ute. To my ute. So, uh, yeah, Dino Week. I think this might be a thing that we're going to try to do. Uh, we have this, like, grandiose plans that if we were organized people, we would uh, be able to execute. And... Uh, you know, we want to do, we, we were going to have like a conspiracy calendar before we got shut down from doing conspiracy. Uh, we were going to do like, you know, 9-11 stuff in September and then JFK stuff in November and then Christmas being a pagan holiday. And yeah, I was going to do Valentine's Day and blah, 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 all that stuff. But I'm just a scattered mess and I never can do that. It's like, oh, today's Easter. It's like, oh, make an Easter video. That's kind of how it goes. So you like the videos. Oh, you guys know Malak. You like the video with the dinosaurs and the painting. That's cool, huh? The suicide assault. That's crazy. Uh, 200 years before uh, uh, oh, Richard Owen, Owen Richard, the British scientist who came up, who coined the term dinosaur, which just means terrible lizard, terrible reptile. It would be my contention, I guess I would start there, that what we know of as historical, uh, well, actually, I'm not even going to try and salvage that thought because that wasn't correct. Here, here, here's how we'll start this, okay? We live in a world where people say that the Bible is a fairy tale and the Bible is a historical account i'm coin the term an augmented story at minimum historic augmented historical story but it could be absolutely the valid written tradition from the creator of this universe of the earth what we're doing here how we got here and science keeps backing it up you know recently we've covered the big bang which is out it's really cool because a bunch of people are covering that now, like a bunch of people on YouTube. The Big Bang's not dead. They're just controlling the narrative. And I did that show a couple of weeks ago or a couple months ago or whatever. Um, and then, you know, we covered mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam, and that ended up in a whole kerfuffle with that Zeke guy. And now we're talking about dinosaurs and why. Because all of these things uh, point to the validity of Scripture. That the book talked about these things and science was like, well, we're going to disprove the Bible. We're going to free science from Moses, as Lyell said. And it just keeps, uh, it's like they're just trying to suppress the truth and it keeps popping out. So we have this idea that the truth of scripture is becoming real and they're calling the Bible a fairy tale book. And what's interesting is what, uh, we call fairy tales with dragons and giants and vampires might also be true. And what is an actual fairy tale, in my opinion, is the theory of evolution. So we have, they're saying our belief, our textbook, if you will, is fairy tale when it's true. And then their myth of evolution is, uh, I believe, a fairy tale. And they're calling that true. So we have anti-truth, which the devil's the father of misinformation. Interesting, though, because we all went to school and we all had... 
we were just taught about what our reality is. You know, well, it's this, it's boring, and 14 billion years, and, you know, chaos created order, and death created life, and you're just an animal, and all of these loric things, giants and, you know, dragons, these are all just myths. Your reality is really boring. Well, I postulate that, and this is what a crazy person would say, that giants are real, and uh, vampires are real, and dragons are real, and the flood happened. Uh, Charles, Prince Charles, who's been in the news recently with his Commonwealth Games appearance, it's classy. Um, he's a descendant of Vlad the Impaler, who is Dracula. Who, you know, here, here's what here's what you have with these things. Okay, you have an event that happens, and it's such a crazy story. You know, people people start retelling the story and it becomes more grandized with each retelling. So the, the fish story, right? Like I caught a fish, it was this big and then it was this big and then it was this big and then it was a whale and then it was like, dude catches whales and then it's like whale is a kraken and then crack it just ends up becoming this like feedback loop of like exaggerated renditions of the story to where it becomes a myth. Like telephone, exactly, it's a telephone game. And so if you, if, you can, if you can scale away all of these layers of uh, uh, exaggeration and try to get down to the root story, there's like a historical thing that happened as to why they started telling the story. And yeah, they might have been like, you know, the guy who got the 12 snakes out of the village, uh, you know, might end up becoming he was a saint and he was a thousand snakes and whatever. But there's a root the truth in this. And so what you maybe have with the giant stories, and, and, and these, are the, these are things that every culture, I, I can't say every, but the, the vast majority of cultures around the world, civilizations around the world, tell these stories. The vampire, the dragon, the flood, the... Um, The giants, these things, they just, everybody tells a story and why they didn't have the internet. They weren't sharing this on, you know, prehistory Reddit. They weren't, they weren't on like, you know, uh, monkey face book. <laughs> they, they, they weren't, it wasn't a thing. They just, they, they had a version of these stories. So I post a video on Dino week, uh, this, the painting of Saul. And it's the first video that's done really well in the account in weeks. So that's, it's encouraging, <clears throat> but so many people are saying in the chats, if you go back and watch the Dino video, it's the Suicide of Saul Dino, a Suicide of Saul painting on there. Um, this guy's clearly riding what looks like Brontosaurus or Brachiosaurus. Um, so many people are saying in the chat, they're saying, my grandfather, this one Japanese lady said, my, my dad told us a story of the sea dragon and it was true. It was like a village thing. And then their guy's like, we're from this, you know, tribe in eastern, or it's, it's our village in eastern Russia, and they totally had dragons, and everybody knows about it. It's like, it's like, people are like, yeah, this is like, if if you, if we can get to the actual truth and the historical information that is orally passed down, this is like a, it's like a knowledge that mankind has always known about. So people are fascinated. This is like people love the idea of dinosaurs, and they tell you this version. 89 billion zillion years ago, they died and turned into chickens. So what happened? Doesn't matter. They're not interesting. They're dead chickens. They're your chickens. They're alive and they're dead. But you got to believe two things because whatever, science. And we just like, we're like, Ugh. We, we fill out the paper. Like, it's a billion years ago. And like people just lose their con. And then eventually it's just this myth. Well, a funny thing happened. In 2003, and I'll show the I'll share the video here in a minute. They were transporting a T-Rex bone, a T-Rex, and it got cracked, and the uh, the inside of the fragments were of the fossil fragments were preserved. And then a, doc, a paleontologist, Dr. Mary uh, Schweitzer, boiled them in acid by accident. She did too much, and she finds uh, viscous, uh, fleshy collagen, stretchy soft tissues and she just freaks out and she goes 
I can't tell anybody this. If I tell them this, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to be the laughing stock of paleontology. I've worked very hard. You know, I have that AT guy on. So I think there's some conspiracy and everybody's just like in science is working together. But it doesn't have to be some sinister conspiracy. It could just be talk about the thing and you're done. Like and there's a lot of things going on today politically that we all know if we talk about whatever side, you could get in trouble, right? So just don't talk about it. Well, this is young earth creation in the scientific community. You go, uh, uh, hey, dinosaur. It's crazy. We found soft tissues. And you know what this could mean? I can't even say what it's going to mean because then you were like, wow, you're not a scientist and you're done. You'll never work in this town again. Very effective way to keep people from talking about it. And that's if they can even possibly think critically enough to cognite. Oh, maybe it's young because... You've been indoctrinated. You just, you, it's, not even, it's not even in your vernacular. It's not even in your intellectual vernacular. It's not even something your brain, in your, you know, the, the communication stream in your brain can even entertain. But you, you do, and you've come across this, and you go, you know what? This looks like this is supposed to be 70 million, 75 million years old, and it's not going to happen. So maybe we're wrong, and like you're done. This is the uh, evolution is their golden calf. It's their golden calf of science. You could not question it. It's 14 billion years. It, it happened by chance. Life created itself and here we are and we're all animals and you will not question it. So anyways, Mary Schweitzer, uh, I'm going to share it here. She, she didn't want to share it and she did. And uh, interestingly, she's actually a create, she's a, she's a Christian um, and she's used by a lot of atheists because she's a theistic evolutionist. Uh, and she definitely says that, you know, these, these tissues are just, uh, it's called cross-linking, which we'll get into. But if you take the aggregate of evidence, okay, and you take, you take the uh, written traditions of these dragons, and then you take the fossil evidence of them being buried in a flood, basically, uh, and then you take the... Um, you know, stories of the dragons being slayed and the guy has to go, the knight gets paid by the king to go get the dragon, he gets the dragon, he gets the gold, he gets the princess. St. George um, is one of those examples, many other ones. It's like, okay, so maybe they were hunting, killing dragons. Marco Polo talked about it. You've got the Suicide of Saul painting, which shows humans what it looks like on dinosaurs. They say they're camels. What a joke. Those aren't dinosaurs. They look like camels. And people in my chat are always like, oh, they're camels. Because they just what they were told. People are like, oh, that could be a dinosaur. And they're like, no, it's not a dinosaur. It's a camel. They're like, oh, sure, it's a camel. It looks like a camel. It's dust. It doesn't look like it's a bron It's a brachiosaurus. It could be a Jurassic Park. Anyway, so you, you go through all these kind of things. You take all these you know points of congruency. And then you add to it soft tissue and dinosaur bones. And what is the most logical deduction here? Every culture talks about it. The Chinese say in their zodiac, it's one of the 12 living animals. Uh, they do their dragon dances for good luck and did not have the dragons come back. We have Komodo dragons. I mean, they eat things whole. That's interesting. You know, the map, there be dragons. Hick sunk dragones, right? That's, that's on the map. There's dragons here. <laughs> it's a map. You think about that. You got a globe from 1500s and it's like, oh yeah, here's South America. Here's Australia. There's kangaroos there. Here's China. There's dragons there. Just warning you. I'm just going to put this on the map. Don't don't go there if you don't want to get in a dragon kerfuffle because it could happen. <clears throat> you put that on the map. Is it fake news? Were they trying to scare people away from the riches of China? There's actually gold there, but we're just going to say there's dragons, so nobody goes there, and we'll go back to get the gold later. Meanwhile, the Chinese are like, yeah, there's totally dragons here. And they find the soft tissue. Well, here's the thing, Okay. Dragons were here 500 years ago. Dinosaurs were here 500 years ago. If they were buried in a flood 5,000 years ago, which is how you would have these soft tissues, well, you're not going to get, you're not going to go from dinosaur T Rex to chicken in 5,000 years. Nobody believes that. So now you're in trouble because this is a big part of their theory. How did they die? How did, when I was a kid, it was like, how did the dinosaurs die? Nobody knew. It's like an asteroid, maybe. It's an earthquake. Bleh. They're like, yeah, we know, we always do these turn into birds or whatever. But if, if you lose this 
narrative of where, you know, the dinosaurs b being wiped out by this catastrophic thing and then turning into birds and they were here 5,000 years ago. How do you reconcile dinosaurs with man, dinosaurs here 5,000 years ago? You can't. So it's like there, there's some things that they're willing to give up. They're like, okay, you know what? There was a man and there was a woman. Okay, now there's no beginning in the universe. Have you guys seen this? I don't know if you guys study apologetics and you know astronomy. They're done with the Big Bang. They're done with it. They're, they're, they're just like I covered it. It's like, well, they're going to change the story. We got to fix this, they said. They're saying steady state universe. Like I'm going to debate Mike Burgundy on Sunday if he shows up. And he's going to say the universe has always been here. This is what they're saying. A very, it's always been here. It just, it just expanded. It was like here already. We don't know what happened before I got here, but it was here and it just re-expanded. They're just like going to keep kind of changing these stories. But they are not going to say that it was one man and one woman. It's this whole story that everybody else, every other bloodline died. Who cares about the modeling? Who cares about the, you know, the genetic modeling? Who cares about the, 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 the simulation, the, the, the population simulation? All this stuff matters. Who cares about the molecular clock? It doesn't matter. It wasn't one man and one woman. It's the most recent common ancestor. We definitely came from chimps. The phylogenetic tree is real, even though none of the data fits with it. So they'll give you mitochondrial leaf, but they're not going to give you Eve. And they'll give you the Missoula River, uh, the Missoula uh, flood, the Columbia River Gorge flood that Barrett's found, and the Altai Mountain one, but they're not going to give you the Grand Canyon. They, can't, they cannot, it's like, it's, we're like playing intellectual what you believe risk, okay? And If people went, if, if in your headspace you said the flood caused the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon was formed by a major water event, everybody's going to be like, that was Noah's flood. They can't give us that. They, they won't be able to give us that. They can't. Let me see if I can pull this up here. It's just, just a, I'm taking a shot in the dark. There's a screenshot of the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyone. Grabbed Canyone. That's how I spell. Give me one of these pictures. That's a good one. Well, it's not gonna, it's like, welcome to the Grand Canyon. Let's see if I can find a better one. Can you actually just show this? Well, anyways, this here that you can kind of see all these washouts and little corners and spillways and turny abouts and stuff. You really think that's just the Colorado River? You really think that that river just went this way, went around the corner, dug it out, dug it out over here, meandered over here, just dug that out, pulled the water out, pulled the rocks out pulled it all out you feel pretty good about that just the river just doing river stuff over here just you know it's a river over here and it goes down here here's where it's a river over here but then it would like took this out over here took that out over there like Come on, man. Just go in your backyard and get a little bit of a hill and get your garden garden hose going and let it flow down. Okay. And tell me if you're going to get that. You're not. You're going to get a couple. You're going to get some valleys. You're not going to get this. This is a washout. They can't give you the Grand Canyon. Is my point. If they give you the Grand Canyon, you're like the flood probably happened. They can't give us that dinosaurs were dragons and that dragons were here more recently and that they were killed in the flood and that some came afterwards and they were hunted to extinction and that they were here 5,000, 10,000 years ago. They can't. It's just, they, it, it doesn't matter. Just they're going to die on that hill. Period. They're just going to die on that hill, the dinosaur hill. It doesn't matter what they find. So I'm going to show, I was like a 13 minute rant or 40 minute rant about this, but I've got three videos that we're going to show and uh, full trigger war, uh, alert with each one of them. It's funny. You guys get to watch me go crazy watching, you know, seeing these videos. But uh, we're going to look at three of them. One of them is the Mary Schweitzer interview. Okay. I remember seeing this when it came out. And I was just like, holy shit, this happened. These dinosaurs, this was recent. This is crazy. Two minute 
two and a half minute video. It'll probably take me 10 minutes to go through it, five minutes to go through it. Then we're going to do this video, which is the system, gen the empire strikes back, the system generated mes message. Like, you know, uh, yeah, soft tissues, yeah, it's crazy, it's breaking paleontology. And then it's going to be like, no, we figured it out. This is a trigger video for me. I've, sh I've covered it before on live shows. And then we're going to do one which I found today, which I didn't know existed. Um, what happened to the dinosaur that was found in India, India with flesh still on its bone? This covers like three or four different things, uh, and it is really frustrating. And it's for, it's 10 minutes. Uh, it covers Mary Schweitzer's. It covers this crazy dinosaur they found in India, like fully on a dinosaur, and they tell you it's just a weasel, which is hilarious. Uh, and then another thing, and it's like they're all triggery. So... What we're going to see is uh, the Mary Schweitzer discovery and evidence for soft tissue. For those of you guys that, that don't know my content, I don't go to Answers in Genesis or ICR or Discovery Institute and use them as my sources. I use secular sources always. Straight from the secular horse's mouth. The horse for the priest of science who rides it all over your head. Uh, so we're going to do these three and you're going to be able to watch like what the O4 information was and then, you know, um, the empire response and then just some other craziness and how this young, it sounds like a young guy. I'm sure he's younger than I am. His, his like, well, we know that they're not, we know that they're, they're not old. Or they're not young. I'm sorry. We know they're old. We don't know the other things. We don't know. We don't know how they got here. We don't know what they're doing here. We don't know how this happened. We just know they're old. And this is one of the themes I want you to watch. They don't know anything about these dinosaurs. They don't know why they're here. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense if you understand, you study history, you study the Bible, and you, all other cultures. You think critically, you use your brain, <clears throat> you know, use logic. You go, oh, <clears throat> the kind of logic that says, you know what? Everything doesn't come from nothing. You know what? Things don't get better over time. There's a guy on one of my, <clears throat> came up my algorithm, his channel on YouTube, uh, TikTok is something like the decaying Midwest. And he, he's just going through these towns in the Midwest that have been vacated. And every one of these schools that were like thriving schools in 04 are just like being eaten by the earth, <laughs> eaten by the earth, totally molded out, just totally being utterly destroyed. Cement, <laughs> eaten by the earth, totally molded out, just totally being utterly destroyed. Cement, metal, all of it <laughs> destroyed. In like 16 years or whatever. It's like you look at that and you go, yeah, that's how things work. That's how they, they just destroy into nothingness. They just pulverize and destroy into nothingness. And they teach you that things, everything comes from, everything comes from nothing. And then it self-organized and got better over time. It's, it's illogical. It's illogical. And then they're going to teach you that. Uh, you know, all of these stories of the flood and the dragons, just a, pff, people are crazy, just crazy. They had no idea. And they were stupid, by the way, because we're evolving. So they were stupid and we're smart. They created fire and like the rock <laughs> and the wheel. And we're just, you know, we're way better. So and we can't even trust them because they didn't, they didn't know. So we can't trust our ancestors. They were stupid. They were cave people. We're evolving. We know now they didn't know then. You can't listen to their stories because their stories are whack. And everything comes from nothing. And if things get better over time, and yes, 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 yes. Yes, a human being. Ready for this? I was researching it today. This is my first interactive chat with the, uh, with the group tonight. If you put a human being, was being, human bin, <laughs> who passes and in a box and you bury him in the ground. So not a human being, a human done was. <laughs> you take the human done was and you bury him in, in the, uh, uh, what does it say in, uh, with Cain and Abel? In the passage of time, the human will cease to exist at all. It'll become dust. Okay, the bones will go away. It will be, the bo bones will become dust. They will be, they, it, over the passage of time, there will be no remnant of organic material of this bones in this coffin. The question, the interactive question for the chat is, what amount of time does a human 
body go from being expired and then to dust? What is the amount of time? How many years? I'll give you a hint. It's years. How many years? It's not weeks or months. Does it take for a human done bin to nothing powder? I had the tab pulled up and I closed it. So you're just going to take my word for it, I guess. 12. It's a good guess. Liv. Anybody else? 500. Creek. Good guess. Depends on how well it's preserved. When well, no, Dave. It, I mean, yes, it does. But in this scenario, you just put the bot, you put the body in the box and you bury the box. There's, it's not like uh, not being fossilized. So I, I'm not doing a one-to-one -one comparison here. I'm just talking about under normal conditions, how long organic materials can stay structurally stay. 300, 130. I'm going to give this to Mackenzie. Thank you for being here. Mike Wallace is still the king. Humanoid also gets it 75 to 100. 100 years. In 100 years, there'll be dust. You're not going to get any soft tissue in 100 years, okay? How deep and what temperature matters. I, mean, I get that. But for the, for, the, for the thought experiment, 100 years, gone. Carbon material, done. Okay. You rapidly bury them. You give them exact conditions. You know, you you put them under a bunch of mud. You put them deep in the soil. You, you keep them away from, you know, uh, radioactive decay because that's happening down in the earth and all these different things. You take that 100 years and you can push it out to what? 10,000 years? 100? By their most conservative estimates, the very longest that any paleontologist, forensic paleontologist, would have ever assumed that you could get organic material, soft tissues. I'm not talking about a semblance of something, but like squishy soft tissues. Like, you know, you get stuck in your teeth when you eat it. They thought a million years, best case scenario. But that's even being very, I think that's, a, that's, that's like best case scenario. Anyways, 75 million years later, and the dinosaur has soft, squishy tissues. And they thought it was just one, and it turns out it's all of them. It's all of them. It's their horns, they have collagen in them. They just doesn't look like they've been here that long. And this would be the standard deduction. The standard deduction would be, we were, this is what, if you had any intellectual honesty, you'd go, you know what? We're wrong. It just turns out they were here more recently. And that's okay, because science is okay, and it can be wrong. But, bone two. Yeah, Dave, all the way down. All the way down. I could look into that more. It's just one thing I was re I was just trying to figure out how long organic material would last. Uh, maybe I can find it. Let's see if I can find my history and see if I can find it. Yeah, it doesn't do. However, I came across it. Okay. Well, maybe I emailed it to myself. Let me see. No. Okay. And now to our feature presentation. This first video is from a fairly well-known video media uh, news production. It was called 60 Minutes. 20 years ago, people would watch something that was 60 minutes long. Now, 60 minutes long. Now on TikTok, I'm trying to keep my videos under 40 seconds because today this news program would be called 60 seconds. It would have to be called 60 seconds because ain't nobody going to watch anything 60 minutes. Frustrating. Evolving. Evolving. I'd like to know what year this came out. Uh, you can tell by the, it looks like it's 90s, but this discovery wasn't made till 05, so I'm guessing it's not in the 90s. Although, timing's weird on this whole thing anyways. Okay, two minutes and 44 seconds. I might let it try and play all the way through. I might be too triggered. I don't know. 60 minutes talking with Mary Schweitzer about her discovery. I'm not going to be able to let it play all the way through. I'm certainly going to be interrupting it, so be prepared for me to do that. Here we go. 
What happened next happened by mistake. Mary put some fragments of the bone in acid to dissolve away the outermost layer of mineral. But the acid worked too fast and all the mineral dissolved away. Being a fossil, there should have been nothing left. But there was, and it was elastic, like living tissue. This is the piece. <gasps> no. She showed us video she took under the microscope. That's really what happened? Yes. That's the dinosaur yeah. bone? Without mineral now. That's what was left. It looked like the soft tissue she would have expected to find if it had been modern bone. This was impossible. This bone was 68 million years old. It's very hard to find this because what you find now is this plagiarized version of like, it's like kind of a structure, maybe it's a cell, maybe it's not. But this is what we're talking about. Seventy-five million year old squishy dino innards. So just like when we were privileged to cover the James Webb breaking information, I, I might actually go to a James Webb video if I think about it, just to show you where they're going with this. I found their documentation saying they have a problem. This is entirely contradictory. They have to get rid of it. They will fix this. They started, you know, serial big bang denier. I still need to make that shirt. If anybody's a good artist and wants to make me, wants to help me make a serial big bang denier shirt, I'll cut you in on the profits. We'll make these, sell them. Start the serial big bang denier club. S E R I A L, not serial like. Although, yeah, anyways. Okay, so. Um, they're rewriting the narrative about the Big Bang thing. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. And they're already saying, oh, the instrumentation was wrong. We, we, we got the information out too quick. People, everybody had access to the information. People were thinking critically. People were making the wrong decisions. because It wasn't our approved version. They were wrong. We're right. We're the priests. You can't question us. Well, same thing with this. Okay, they've whitewashed this thing into now it's just known like when i when i get done with this i might do another live and debate people and the atheists are going to go well no it was lead it's a cross-linking we know this now it's just it's a thing that happens we, we know what happens okay here's the problem with that you don't know you 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 can't know if cross-linking would preserve tissues for 75 million years because you haven't run a 75 million year experiment to validate this. Just guessing. That's my guess. My guess is that Mary Schweitzer and co. weren't able to take this process of cross-linking and preserve something and look at it after 75 million years and see if you get squishy dino chewies. Not going to happen. Anyways. They've just, they've taken the data, they've compressed it and fit it into their worldview. And now the story is, shit, we see soft tissue everywhere. Dinosaurs, it's not a problem. It happens. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The size of universes, the size, the size of galaxies, mitochondrial leave, genetic entropy, soft tissue, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that everything we're seeing supports a younger Earth and the biblical narrative. It doesn't matter. We know this is impossible because we know when dinosaurs lived. We know when dinosaurs lived. It was 75 million. I read it in a book and I'm smart and I consumed that information and I retained it. And I know this because I trust the book. Somebody wrote the book and I trusted them. They wrote the book and I know it. We know it's impossible. I don't care. Sure, I see squishy dino parts. It doesn't matter. They don't matter because I was told, <laughs> think about this. I was told 30 years ago when I was a kid that they were 75 million years old and then this came later, and I don't care that. I don't care about that. I don't care what I see with my eyeballs. I don't care what my brain says. I don't care that it says logically that this soft, squishy tissue isn't going to last 75 million years. I don't care. I read it in a book, and I believe the book that I read. But your book's a fairy tale. The Bible, my book, can't question it. Doesn't matter. It's just what it is. It's what it is. So well, I'm doing this rant because this is what was being reported in 2005 when it was coming out and people were f 
freaking out. Just like they're freaking out about the Big Bang right now. This is bad. This is real bad. This is bad. This this makes the Bible look right, and it makes our theory look wrong. This is bad. We have to fix this. The AT guy was on my lap. You think it's a conspiracy? Well, whatever. It's either a conspiracy by a small group of people, or it's just a feedback loop of just a critical thinking regurgitation of incorrect information, whatever you want to call it. Okay. It's like I, I'm taking Alex Jones supplements. Hey guys, <laughs> bring it down. Okay, bring it down. This is fine. It's fine. Everybody knows about this. This is in school books. This is in textbooks, right? <clears throat> Anybody go to school recently? I don't know. Anybody in the chat? We got quite a few people in here. University, high school. Anybody been to formal education that would cover dinosaur history, paleontology, anything in this vein in the last, since 2005? This came out in 2005. Is anybody watching this that can engage with me? Have they been to school since 2005? Okay, that's part one of the question. If you've if you haven't been to school, you can't you can't answer because your data isn't going to help with my uh, argument here. But if you were at school in that time, last ten years, last fifteen years, last eighteen years, did did you cover this in your textbook? Did did you open up the page to the soft, squishy dino jerky, and did they tell you about how this happened and how it totally makes sense? Chappy wasn't told about it. You work at a U. Nope. Okay. My guess is that no. My guess is that it's not in your textbook. Your textbook says certainly it's 90 billion trillion years ago, and we don't we're not worried. We're just gonna leave out the soft tissue thing. Negative. Thank you guys for the feedback. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't fit. That doesn't fit with the If you're in a toxic relationship, I've said this before, okay? The person in the relationship is going to leave out the information that is damning. They're going to they're gonna say the good things. Hey, you remember all the times that I wasn't cheating on you? Remember those, right? Let's not worry about the other parts. That's just... Let that go. I say this all the time on the show. The truth invites inquiry. Okay? It is, it's not an imposition to impose when somebody has the truth. Yeah, look at my phone. Here it is. Here it is. It's not locked. Check out my emails, Hillary. Just go through my emails. Nothing to see here. Okay? When you don't represent the truth... You have to control the information. You have to leave out a lot of information. Just not report the things that you're doing that people don't want people to know. And then when they question you, you bully them. Okay? You gaslight them. You tell them, you're stupid. You don't trust me. You have trust issues. You can't understand what I'm going through. You can't understand the science. Watch the treatment Mary Schweitzer gets. By the way, She's not a young earth creationist. As a matter of fact, atheists, I've done about seven hours of research on this on both sides of the camp in the last few days. Atheists love soft tissue dinosaurs. They think it validates them now, whatever. Uh, they love Mary Schweitzer because Mary Schweitzer is a Christian and she's like, yeah, no, young earth creationists use this. They don't understand the science. Mary Schweitzer is not a young earth creationist. Ready? So you see this and you think, what? You say, I didn't you want say, to tell anybody. <laughs> You'd be ridiculed, yes. right? And so I, I said to my technician, okay, do it again. I don't believe And this is going to take me a while. You, you know, people, there's people that, um, when they're uncomfortable or they're embarrassed or they're uh, in a bad situation, they laugh. Do you know those people? That's fine. That's fine. It totally punches me. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. 
punches me in the mouth. You know how it goes. Everybody's got fists. I have a mouth. It's a perfect fit. <laughs> it's fine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. And there's a weird cut there too. Listen to this. You, th you actually think it's funny that she made one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in the history of science. Okay, this is huge. This rewrites the book if they were interested in rewriting a book. This rewrites the book. Hey, we all believe dinosaurs were 75 million years old, and it turns out there's dino jerky. We could sell dino jerky. This is a big deal, and they found it by accident. Wouldn't it be great if she could go, hey, science, hey, I, I made a huge discovery. Yeah, yeah, dinosaurs were probably here a lot more recently than we thought. This is a big deal. Maybe we're not monkeys. Maybe the universe didn't create itself. I mean, maybe the Bible's real. She's a Christian. This is fun. It's a good time. Hey, holy shit, this is a big deal. It's exciting. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a reality where when you make such a discovery, you're not afraid that you're going to be ridiculed? She's a woman, okay? Hey, scientists, this is a woman. Do you have any instinct to protect a woman? You could just, you just attack a woman because she found the truth? She's laughing. <laughs> I can't tell the people what I found because I'm going to get fired. They could kill me. This is not... <laughs> don't... Don't overlook what I'm telling you. It is not okay. Okay? I get that in 03, there was like a lot of like things that we were like saying were okay that weren't okay. And people would laugh them off. It's not okay. It's not okay. Uh, I get a message in the chat that says, uh, uh, Chris says, literally a blood vessel or two. Uh, Chris, you're wrong, and I'm going to show you the video again. This is not a blood vessel. So, uh, con congratulations. I've got a person in the chat who is gone probably to school or watched the atheist publications about this since it's come out. In his reality... It's a blood vessel or two. Let me quote this. He says, literally a blood... Well, no, he actually says, a blood vessel isn't dino jerky. And then he says, literally a blood vessel or two, supposedly. All right, Chris, I'm going to teach you about science here. You ready? This is what she found. This is the actual footage when Mary made this discovery 17 years ago. It looked like the soft... Was elastic, like living tissue. This is the piece. <gasps> no. She showed us video she took under the microscope. That's really what happened? Yes. That's the dinosaur yeah. bone? Without mineral now. That's what was left. It looked like the soft tissue she would have expected to find if it had been modern bone. This was impossible. This bone was 68 million years old. So you <clears throat> see this and you think what? You say, I didn't you want say, to tell anybody. <laughs> You'd be ridiculed, yes. right? And so I, I said to my technician, okay, do it again. I don't believe it. And yet, in sample after sample, they were there. Things that look suspiciously like flexible, transparent blood vessels. She finally mustered the courage to tell Jack. She said she dissolved the bone away and there were blood vessels. And, you know, I was, like, shocked. I mean, How could that be? How could that be? That's right. The things... So the reason I pointed out the Chris message is, I don't know if he was in here before, but that's literally, they're changing the narrative. And, and it's going to be marginalizing the thing. You know, if you've ever been like a, in a car accident, you know, it's like you really ran into me. You like rear-ended them and like, you know, damaged their plate fell off. They're going to have to have insurance or whatever. And then you start telling the story again. It's like, eh, like they slammed on their brakes. And like, I didn't really hit them that hard. And like, we didn't need to exchange. And like, by the time it's over, it's like, you never even hit the person. This is what they're doing. They weren't just a blood vessel or two. That's fake news. 
they are and they found them over it's actually not it's commonplace now they can take a horn and do this with the mineral thing it's just it's in there it's collagen collagen tissues uh blood vessels uh dino turkey i'm gonna stick with that okay so she musters the courage to tell her lead scientist hey it sucks i uh i know what this is gonna look like and look at his response i slowed it down in one of my edits look at this i'm gonna slow this down as much as i can for you guys to see how science, how cringy this was for science. Let me mute it real quick. He's like, this is impossible. This is this not gonna happen. Look at that face. Look at that face. We've all made that face. This isn't good here. No, no, this is a big deal. Okay, it doesn't end here. We're going to keep it going. This interaction is so genuine. Only mustered the courage to tell Jack. She said she dissolved the bone away and there were blood vessels. And, you know, I was like shocked. I mean, how could that be? How could that be? That's right. The things Mary was finding inside dinosaur bones. Look at that blood vessels, and even what seem to be intact cells pose a radical challenge to the existing rules of science. That organic material can't possibly survive even a million years, let alone 68 million. Ma <laughs> this thing is absolutely challenging the rules of science. <laughs> They're so ridiculous. They're so relentless. It's like they're not even going to say it. It's like maybe they weren't here 60, 70 million years ago. No. The rules of science, the, the rule is evolution, okay? The rule is deep time. That's the rule. So this thing here is breaking the rule This that the organic material shouldn't last this long. They're not even going to throw out that it could have been here a lot sooner. Like, what if she said... The whole Darwinian paradigm is in deep shit right now. This is crazy. Dinosaurs didn't turn into chickens, and this is breaking science. Nope, this is breaking the rules about what we know about how things decompose over 75 million years. Okay, now they get into the uh, how the scientific community, the peer-reviewed uh, process went. Mary, Jack, and their team published their B-Rex findings in a series of papers in the journal Science and were promptly attacked. Critics said their samples might have been contaminated or that the supposed blood vessels were actually something called biofilm, a type of slime. But as Mary showed us, she's been able to replicate her findings. These are pieces of an even older dinosaur, a well-preserved 80-million-year-old duckbill. When she dissolved it away in acid... Let's put this under the scope here. Well, look. Is that a blood vessel? This is a blood vessel. You see the branches right there? And look at all of them. And it's so consistent over and over and over again. We do this bone and it comes out and I get excited every time. I can't help it. I mean, 80 million years old. Mary published her new results last year. And while some of her critics have been swayed, the controversy still rages. And the stakes are high. If blood vessels can survive 80 million years, what about DNA? <laughs> the stakes are high we might be able to get 80 million year old dna that's a big stake no the stakes are high the theory might be done so that's what they said in 05 and if we look at today it's going to be a much more whitewashed version but if you actually do research uh from uh, people who don't adhere to the standard model, you're going to get uh, that they've got collagen, um, many other soft tissues in here, not just blood vessels, um, other organic materials that shouldn't have preserved this long. And I might get into that. I don't know. I don't have that research queued up because it is creation research, but they're also scientists and paleontologists, and they've also done uh, peer-reviewed lab studied. They've actually There's actually a study, and I've never referenced it because... Uh, I can't. It's not valid enough, but 
So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reference that one. Okay. The Empire Strikes Back. That's this part of this video. Let's see if I can actually center it up a little bit. Oh, stay. Mm hmm. Should be a little better. Fancy. This is um, stated clearly. Oh, interesting. They published a new study. This is the Empire's uh, response. And this is the idea of cross-linking. This is their theory. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, somebody said, what is cross-linking? You're going to learn about cross-linking in this video. So, do I want to try to be fair with this? Eh, let's just let it go and see what happens. This is a really frustrating thing for me. Um, you've, you guys have seen me be triggered on lives when people say things to me in a very passive-aggressive way. They say, you seem like a smart guy. How can you believe this? Which is the idea, the inference is that if I am stupid to believe it and no smart person would believe their logic and rationale, they would believe, smart people believe in evolution. I hate that attack. I just hate it. There's very many smart people uh, who don't believe in the theory of evolution. That doesn't disqualify or quantify your intelligence or lack of. This is a very, I'm sure this is a young man who's just being, you know, very, the science community is very excited about him. They speak very slowly. They speak very slowly, very matter of fact. And if you question them, you're an idiot. So here we go. It clearly presents the scientific saga of Dr. Mary Schweitzer and her discovery of soft tissue inside a dinosaur bone. In 2003, a team of paleontologists finished excavating an incomplete yet extremely well-preserved T-Rex skeleton. During transport, the animal's femur, its thigh bone, had to be broken in two. While the bone was eventually put back together, pieces that had fallen out were kept separate and then sent to Dr. Mary Schweitzer for dissection and analysis. After applying a mild acid to the fragments to remove hard minerals, a diverse collection of soft material could be seen under the microscope. It included what looked like cells and tiny blood vessels. They were very degraded, but similar to those commonly found inside fresh bone. Chemical analysis further revealed what looked like animal proteins. Dr. Schweitzer was shocked. According to our understanding at the time, Unless treated with chemicals, the way that leather is, for example, and then further sealed for preservation, soft tissue was predicted to completely deteriorate, even under the best of circumstances, in less than one million years. This <clears throat> T-Rex leg bone, however, was thought to be millions of years old. Tens of millions old. What could this discovery of soft tissue mean? To Dr. Schweitzer and to many other researchers, there were three main possibilities. Number one, the fossil might be far younger than previously thought, maybe even less than one million years old. Hey. Number two, the fossil could have been recently contaminated by microbes that totally produced debunked. the soft structures after the bone had fossilized, a substance known as biofilm. Option number three, there might be a previously unknown natural mechanism capable of preserving soft tissue far longer than one million years. Okay. Three ideas. The uh, 60 Minutes interview mentioned the biofilm. It was contaminated with biofilm. It's biofilm. We know it's biofilm. These aren't blood vessels and proteins and collagen. It's biofilm. We know this. Totally debunked. Not at all biofilm. So that leaves two. This is why this is so important. There's two, there's two things this could mean. The fossil is young or some rescuing device, magical preservation process that they won't be able to test because we're talking about 75 million years, okay? Do, run your test for 100,000 years, one seventieth of the time, and then we'll talk. Anything you, I don't care what you run for a year or four years or whatever. <laughs> what, when they come up, just like the Big Bang Theory nonsense they're working on, when they come up with their theory, 
they're going to run a test for three years, six months, two, whatever. They're going to be, yeah, totally. 75 million years, totally works. It worked in this amount of time. It'll work in that amount of time. But we'll never be able to disprove it. Let's see which direction they go. Having studied paleontology throughout her career, Dr. Schweitzer immediately knew that option number one was least likely. Immediately no. Immediately no. No bias. Having been a paleontologist, immediately no. One is out. I don't care. I don't care how logical it looks. I don't care. One is out. The fossil had been found in a set of rock layers known as the Cretaceous. Ancient sediments lay down between 145 to 66 million years ago. Right. Uh, and just, you've seen me cover this on the show before. The Cretaceous, uh, the Cretaceous period was 145 to 66 million years. And they know this is when the dinos were because the dinosaurs were in that time. But also, dinosaurs are found at ground level. Also at ground level, just on the surface. 12-year-old boy in Canada walking down the mountain. Holy shit, there's a dinosaur right there. So the Cretaceous layer can be there. I wish I could point like in TikTok. You know, it can be 60 feet down or 100 feet down or 200 feet down or on the surface, wherever they need it to be. Immediately know, we know it's in the Cretaceous and we'll tell you where the Cretaceous is. We have index fossils. We're going to debate. We're just, we, we know that the Cretaceous layer, we, we know this. We know one isn't a possibility because we have a Cretaceous layer that can be at ground level or a million feet deep or whatever. Immediately know. Our understanding of the age of these rocks is founded on thousands of data points telling us how rock layers form, on the careful study of the rise and fall of various ecosystems and animal groups in the fossil record, and on the clear results of hundreds of experiments on radiometric dating. Many overlapping radiometric dating methods have been used to confirm the age range of Cretaceous rocks, and the results have been independently checked by laboratories around the globe. Okay. I'm not going to go into a full radiometric dive. Uh, I see we have some um, uh, antagonists in the room, so I'll maybe cover this after this presentation. But um, there are many radiometric samples that have been sent to independent research labs that are contradictory to this. The, the, what, what they do is the data that fits the worldview. Oh, that totally. That's where it needs to be. That jives. We're good keep it the contradictory information it was an invalid study contaminated study whatever uh there is a project called the rate project young earth creationist uh, radiometric dating uh brilliant scientists these guys are you know you're not gonna hear about them because they they didn't get the mary schweitzer treatment because she didn't rebuke young earth and you know save her save her skin um but they have uh carbon dated diamonds and found carbon in diamonds that's a problem because diamonds are supposed to be four billion years old and carbon lasts fifty thousand years a hundred thousand years uh there is uh, mount saint helens formed rocks that they carbon dated or radiometrically dated sorry and they didn't tell people they came from mount saint helens and they gave them a totally erroneous date when they knew when the rocks had formed and they weren't even close so the labs and the, the, the i've said this before the the only thing that old earth creation has left now that starlight is out the big bang ruined that or not the big bang the james webb telescope now that the dis distant starlight problem has basically been handled by technology things nasa <laughs> um the only thing left that old earth creationists have is uh old earth not creationists accidentists whatever you want to call them uh, is radiometric dating and there are problems with it and it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of valid um it'd be a very coordinated effort to try to dismantle radiometric dating but they're working on it so stay tuned on that but yes you you, you date the rocks you go these rocks uh, are the time that we think and you find fossils and you go, yeah, this, this lines up, but then you end up with an index fossil to date other things uh, based on the assumption that those rock layers, it's called stratigraphy are correct. A lot of assumptions baked in. Um, and I don't know what's going to come down the pike, uh, in the next 10 or 12 years, 20 years. 
but there is a huge wave of young earth creationist researchers and it would be my scientific prediction that they are going to severely upset the radiometric dating apple cart and we've seen this over and over with things they're claiming we know it's fact yada yada then it turns out being wrong i think this is going to be proven wrong we'll see we'll see if that even gets out if it does but okay so dinosaurs we know that young earth doesn't our young dinosaur fossils doesn't work because basically radiometric dating and if you're having an apologetic discussion it's going to literally come down to radiometric dating that's all they have left so here to sum that up well we know that the dinosaurs weren't 93 they're not younger than you know a million years because radiometric dating that's that's the sum up he, he used all this thing we use this radiometric dating we use that radiometric dating, but it's just radiometric dating this is why we know to successfully argue that her single discovery means that the fossil is actually young she would have to ignore everyone else's careful observations Given the extreme imbalance of evidence, it seemed to her and to other well-informed thinkers that option number one was not plausible. Early on, her colleagues argued that option... This is the part of this I want to get, and I'll let, them, let the video play out. The animation... To successfully argue that her single discovery means that the fossil is actually young, she would have to ignore everyone else's careful, careful. observations. Given the extreme imbalance of extreme. evidence, it seemed to her and to other well-informed thinkers. It seemed to her and other well-informed thinkers. Are you a well-informed thinker? I'll do an infomercial. Do you consider yourself intelligent? Are you a well-informed thinker? Because if you are... You will believe what we tell you. Well-informed thinkers would never see soft tissue and dinosaur bones and think maybe their number one posit is accurate. Maybe, maybe dinosaurs were here, I don't know, 5,000, 2,500, 50,000, 25,000, whatever, 1 million years ago. Maybe, maybe, no. Well-informed thinkers don't think that way. Well-informed thinkers think like they want you to think. Well-informed thinkers trust radiometric dating. It's 100% proven. Trust stratigraphy. Trust the theory of evolution. Well-informed thinkers would never think that the dino bones are younger. Ever. Why am I hitting on this? Why am I frustrated? This is all it takes for how many people have watched this video? 483 483,000 subscribers I don't know I'm sure hundreds of thousands if not millions of views for 99.9 .9, 99 out of a thousand people that's all it's gonna take well shit well-informed thinkers think that way I I for a second I was thinking wow there's meat maybe this is younger but I, I am a well-informed thinker. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And careful evidence. Well-informed thinkers. Done. We've got a guy in here. Totally believes it. That's all it takes. It's of evidence. It seemed to her and to other well-informed thinkers that option number one was not plausible. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm drilling this down. Soft tissue. You see this here? Soft tissue, just one little thing. Soft tissue. All other data points. Okay? <laughs> you want to know how this actually goes? All other data points is radiometric dating. Okay, it's one grain. And this uh, iniquitous scale, it's funny that they would do this. No surprise. God hates an unfair scale. The only data point that they have is radiometric dating. Bono used to sing, Bono sang, uh, I, all I've got is red guitar, three chords, and the truth. All they have is radiometric dating, a theory, and a lie. That's all they have. So this scale, I need to remake this, is radiometric dating, me, and all other data points. You want to go through a few of them? Here's a few of them. The universe is fully formed at infinite distances predicted by young earth creationists universe has comets 
Comets only last 10,000 years. You could make this exact same thing. They, they should. We should do this. This would be a fun thing if somebody wants to help me with this. We could make this scale, make a shirt with like 50 scales, and it could be all other data points, comets. All other data points, carbon dating uh, that we have, soft tissue. Wow, that was loud and scared me. Soft tissue, dinosaur bones. Somebody's, they've been carbon dated 30,000 years. And people aren't going to like that, whatever. Um, all their data points. Um, uh, what other younger things that we have? Uh, the magnetic field keeps, uh, is degrading at a very fast rate. And the only way they can explain that is with the rescuing device of pole shifts. Uh, all other data points and genetic entropy. Genetic entropy is that the human mutation rate is happening at an alarming rate and there's no way you could possibly, you, you can, but at 100 mutations per generation, you back that up 300,000 years and you would have had to have such a genetically pure mitochondrial leaf, it's, in fee, it's, it's, just, it's, it's not feasible to imagine. You look at uh, the, the modeling, the population growth modeling. Forget the mitochondrial leaf one, we'll do that one next. But just at the rate of human population growth, for all of recorded history that we've been able to record this, at least for the last 2,000 years, you take that rate and you go backwards. At 15,000 years ago, if man started reproducing, we'd have more humans on the earth than there's like atoms in the universe or something. There's so many zeros. It's like to the thousandth power or something. And that's just 15,000 years ago. Push that back to 197,000 years ago. Look at the genetic modeling with the Y chromosomal atom 6,500 years ago. 6,500 years ago, genetic modeling, all their data points. Um, modeling the most recent common ancestor of all humans, looking at migration five to 7,000 years ago. I mean, we could go on. This is, an, this, is a, this is a misrepresentation of the scale that's actually happening. If you put all of the kernels in there, you know, whether it's comets, genetic entropy, human population, the, the, um, the uh, degrading of the magnetic field, the moon is moving away from us at a predictable rate. We know that it's moving away from us. Um, you put all of the nuggets that we have, it would be like 15 or 20 things and then radiometric dating on the other side. And it would be like this. They're literally showing you the opposite of the truth. All they have, now that the Big Bang is done, or that James Webb is disproving it, whatever you want to say, that they have no idea how far and when they formed and whatever. Either the speed of light's done or the universe is way older or they just have no idea, whatever. With that information, the only thing they have is radiometric dating. They've got a shoddy, shoddy fossil record. Shoddy. They've got some genetic information, but it's all based on the idea that we diverged from the phylogenetic tree. It's all based on the idea that we see uh, in, uh, redundant information in the gene code. You know, there's there's ge there's redundant genetic information in banana and human, and people go, it's because we came from the same place or because it's from the same designer. It's not science. It's a belief. Anyways. Thanks for letting me do that. This is not true. All other data points, it's radiometric dating. Well, early on, her colleagues argued that option number two was most likely. As is the custom in science, papers were published critiquing Dr. Schweitzer's work. Many of them suggested that what she had found was actually biofilm. After closer examination, several years of debate, and many papers published back and forth, however, the scientific community is now largely convinced. The soft tissue that Dr. Schweitzer found is authentic. It did come from the original T-Rex. This left informed thinkers to suspect that option number three was most likely. But how? What natural process or collection of natural processes could allow soft tissue to remain intact for over 66 million years? Nobody had an answer, but Dr. Schweitzer was determined to figure it out. As luck would have it, when first uncovering her discovery, she randomly attended a lecture on brain disease which focused on the destructive power of free iron particles on living tissue. Iron is extremely common in our blood. Normally, however, it's trapped safely inside hemoglobin, <clears throat> a blood protein that uses iron to capture oxygen in the lungs and deliver it throughout the body. While iron is safe and highly useful inside hemoglobin, loose iron particles can wreak havoc on our cells. In a process called cross-linking, 
Iron can trigger a series of chemical reactions, eventually causing proteins and other cellular structures to unravel and fuse together in a tangled, useless mess. In living animals, cross-linking is bad. In dead tissue, however, Dr. Schweitzer knew that cross-linking leads to preservation. Chemicals that we use to turn delicate animal skins into tough, durable leather do so by cross-linking proteins. Formaldehyde, the chemical used to preserve soft tissue in museum specimens, also uses cross-linking to do its work. When Dr. Schweitzer examined the soft tissue from her dinosaur fossil, she found that it was saturated in iron crystals. When the T-Rex had died, blood must have begun to decompose, release iron from hemoglobin. As iron spread through tissue and bone, it initiated cross-linking. The soft tissues most affected would have been preserved like leather for a long period of time. Tissues that were both cross-linked and sealed safely inside hard bone were double protected, allowing double them to survive for millions of years until present day. Based on the evidence, her explanation seemed reasonable, but being a trained scientist, Dr. Schweitzer was not satisfied until she found a way to test her idea. To do so, she designed an experiment. Ostriches are among the closest living relatives to dinosaurs. Their bones are rich in blood vessels, just like those found in the fossil. She obtained an ostrich femur and extracted the vessels using a series of acid and enzyme treatment. For those keeping score at home, ostriches are the most closely related animals to dinosaurs. So, fact, just know. We know that. Well-informed thinkers know that dinosaurs are birds. I think, they, I think they're messing with us. I really think. I know this is going to sound ignorant, but I think that they're... I think that they laugh about... I think they sit around and they think about, like, what dumb shit they can get us to believe. And I think that the idea that dinosaurs turned into birds is one that, like, I've made the joke that the devil sits at the... You know, they have, like, the boardroom table, and they have all the angels. You know, Rizel and Rael and Azazel, all different, whatever. And they're like, what are we going to make them believe about this reality? How about everything in the universe came from nothing? Just, yeah, that's believable. What about, what if it exploded in the place? Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> well, what, what if we teach them that they're monkeys, they're chimps? Yeah. How are you going to get them to do that? You know, there's all these crazy ideas. One of them was like, what if we tell them that the big dinosaur, the 60-foot T-Rex, turned into a chicken? And Satan's like, no way. No way. They're like, watch me. They like have like a game about it. It's like a game. Can we get them to believe the dumbest shit you could ever imagine? I just want you to think about an alligator turning into a bird. Have you ever seen an alligator? I want you to think about that process. You go from scales to feathers. Like, what does that look like? What does the scale to feather transition look like? You, you got these scales that are... Do you, have, do you have a reptile with feathers? Or do you have a bird with scales? Both. That's going to be bad for both. That's going to be bad for both. Reptiles aren't real real agile, and they're not going to necessarily dart out of the way. Armor is good for a reptile. Oh, you're hitting me? I don't know. I've got armor. I've got, I've got reptile. I'm built-in reptile armor. Yeah, keep hitting me. Ugh. When that reptile is a ground-based reptile with feathers, that's going to suck. You better quick evolve. You gotta quick evolve. You, you gotta go from like reptile to get in the air quick because your feathers suck for armor. Or the other way. It's like, I'm a bird with scales. <laughs> it's great because you can't get me, but I can't fly. I'm a bird. I have wings. I would like to fly, but I have scales. So I'm heavy. You ever see a tank fly? Holy shit. I think we can get them to believe that chickens are dinosaurs. I don't think you can do it. Hold my beer. 
we know that ostriches. We know. <laughs> ostriches are. <laughs> ostriches are among the closest living relatives to dinosaurs. Their bones are rich in blood vessels, just like those found in the fossil. She obtained an ostrich femur and extracted the vessels using a series of acid and enzyme treatments. At room temperature, one group of blood vessels was placed in a watery, iron-free solution. She wanted to find out how long the vessels took to decompose. A second batch was placed in a solution of iron-rich hemoglobin. The vessels in normal solution turned to mush in just three days, quickly destroyed by microbes and other natural chemical reactions. After two years, Vessels soaked in iron-rich hemoglobin remained completely intact. No signs of degradation could be found. Now, of course, two years is a far cry from 66 million years. Further experiments may reveal that there is more to this mystery, but Mary Schweitzer's discovery has opened us up to a new understanding of how decomposition works in large animals. Furthermore, her story is a beautiful example of how good science is done. She began by making an observation, presented that observation to the scientific community for their feedback and critique. She then came up with an explanation or hypothesis for the observation. And finally, using her creativity, she designed an experiment to test that hypothesis. Now that we know soft tissue can be preserved naturally, far longer than previously imagined, researchers have begun looking for and finding soft tissue in the fossils of many different species. The study of these ancient structures is helping increase our understanding of how extinct animals once lived and evolved on our planet. I'm John Perry, and that is the scientific saga of Dr. Mary Schweitzer, stated clearly. Okay. Special S thanks to Dr. Mary Schweitzer. She. So I'm not a math uh, master, so I could be wrong, but I just did some quick math. They said over three days it totally decomposed, but in the other solution over two years, it hadn't. So you're looking at 720 days. Uh, by my quick math, they would need 300,000 days or 821 years. So if Mary can run this again for 821 years and she still doesn't see degradation, this theory has a little bit of validity. That's all she needs. Let's run this. We did it for two years. Let's look at it for 821 years. And then the next thing I would like to do is uh, take this. She should probably do a few of these because, you know, 821 years is a long time to wait for the results. Let's take the same process and just put it in some mud. Let's just bury it in mud. Okay. So whatever she did in the lab, I'm sure with like climate controlled and oxygen, they move whatever. Let's just take the same thing and put it in mud and we'll go back in 821 years. And here's what I'll tell you. If in 821 years, there's been zero still or a marginal uh, degradation, like a considerably, considerably less, like there's a fraction of it left. The kind of fraction you could then imagine taking that and timesing it by 72 or whatever it would be, 720,000, whatever it was, whatever it be. Then we could talk, okay? Three years, two years isn't enough time. It is if you want to, if you want to bias this, meaning if you're looking for the data, meaning you're cherry picking, you make a theory, you do your thing, and it's an acceptable enough uh, answer to go, yeah, it confirms what I believe, fine. But to take this and go, yeah, cross-linking. And this is the narrative. This is literally the narrative. Well, there's some other problems. This has to do with the preservation of blood vessels specifically collagen are not blood vessels it's a protein it's a different thing they have no answer for cross-linking in collagen there is no such thing you want to talk about blood fine whatever if i if somehow like we like i i, I don't believe it i can never but not believe this unless we saw it for 821 years this has no answer for collagen collagen doesn't go through this iron hemoglobin enzymatic process of preservation it's collagen it's totally different it's the difference between your hair and your uh you know your um different kind of collagen like ligaments um and blood vessels there's a big difference these are it's not a vascular thing anyways 
that's the Empire's response. And this is the last video I want to watch. Well-informed thinkers would never think that those dinosaur bones were young, period. Well-informed thinkers would never think that the men on the painting were on dinosaurs. Well-informed thinkers would say camels. That's what they would say. They would say camels. Well-informed thinkers would never think that the Chinese dragon myths were anything more than just weird halluc mass global hallucinations. Like, well-informed thinkers would think that everybody in the globe was mass hallucinating dragons and giants. That's what a well-informed thinker would have never well-informed thinkers well-informed thinkers would look at the grand canyon and say that's a river well-informed thinkers would think that everything came from nothing well-informed thinkers would think that information came from non-information well-informed thinkers would think that all of the other converging evolutionary homo sapiens all died off except for the bloodline of mitochondrial leaf she had it she had it going on Everybody else died off. Well-informed thinkers would think these things. And well-informed thinkers would look at these next series. This is crazy stuff. A couple things in here I didn't know about. So uh, let me check on the chat really quick. Thank you guys for being here. It is cherry picking. I agree, Dave. Why can't a person make a hypothesis in science on their own without submitting it for review? Uh, it's just the process they've agreed to. It's like only the qualified people can speak on it which is amazing because then you go through the certification process and guess who is certified? The people who agree with the narrative. And then they do a peer review and they go, oh, uh, and they cannibalize each other on incidentals, on things that don't matter. This and that. And they're like, oh, we're fighting. It's like WWF, we're fighting, but we agree on. Basically evolution. <laughs> like everything else is, we can fight about it and squabble, have infighting, but not the Big Bang, not evolution. And you see this, I, I'm really wanting to, I'm going to get out of Dino Week. I'm going to start to work on the simulation information. And uh, Sabine Hoffen, Hoffenfeld or Hoffenset or whatever, she's a particle physicist and she's out to destroy the standard model of uh, cosmology and of particle physics and quantum physics. She's, it's, all, it's all gone. She needs to get rid of it. I do have hope that there's young people coming up that are going to be able to question the system and actually come up with some real answers because these guys just keep making bigger telescopes and coming up with the same dumb answer. Same formula, same answer, wrong. But yes, you have to, like, you, you, you literally can't be a young earth creationist uh, and submit for peer review because they're not going to take it. They're not going to take the bait. They're not going to talk about it. You have to be in the club. We're not in the club. It's just how it's going to be. So uh, it's their system. It's like, a, it's like the MD system. It's the same thing as the MD system. Their people have the voice and our people aren't in the club. For the last few decades dinosaurs have made it into the mainstream media. They've been featured in films, television and books. Throughout the history of our planet, untold billions of species have come and gone throughout the ages, facing extinction level events that required new life to take on different forms. To this day though, people are able to get their hands on ancient relics of the past, and these include things like dinosaur teeth and bones. Although these ancient giants have been extinct for many years, they still fascinate us to this day, and although we've learned a lot about them so far, there's still an air of mystery surrounding them. Going back a few years ago, it was announced that a creature resembling a dinosaur was discovered in Jasper, which is a small city in India. <coughs> As you can imagine, the photographs soon made their way around social media, and everyone was trying to figure out what this thing was. It caused excitement among some groups as it was suggested a small group of dinosaurs had somehow survived without being detected by humans. The story goes that an electrician was sweeping the floor inside a substation that had been abandoned for many years. While he was looking around the building, he discovered a strange looking object. After pulling it into the light, he could see what appeared to be the remains of a dinosaur-like creature. The thing that was off about this though is that the creature in question didn't look old, and it certainly wasn't fossilized. The creature reminded many of a theropod dinosaur. Theropods are described as dinosaurs that had hollow bones and three-toed limbs. These are perhaps the most recognizable of the- So, I guess before I watch this anymore, uh, we watch this, 
uh, I researched this and it's valid. This isn't just like some weird taboo online thing. Um, this India dinosaur deal was talked about. And where I the case went cold it, to me when they were sending out all of the uh, information for uh, genetic information and other kind of information they were sending it out to labs and there was going to be an update and I couldn't find the update. So, but this was talked about, it went viral. This was a thing, the skinny, this does look like a dinosaur to you guys. This isn't just like some weird, like you see those pictures, like what is this on the sea? This is like a th scientific thing. If you want to look into it, it's the India fleshy dinosaur deal. Check that out, see if that gives you a result. The dinosaurs. One thing that's known though is that a dinosaur or any other creature cannot be in such good state after such a long time. Others went down the route of speculating. I paused that at an interesting time. That's what I really wanted to say. What I wanted you to hear him say, listen. One thing that's known though is that a... One thing that's known though. This looks like a dinosaur. Do, do you see the theme? One thing that's known. Dinosaur or any other creature cannot be in such good state after such a long time. Dinosaurs or any other creature cannot be in such a good state for such a long amount of time. So kind of like the Mary Schweitzer thing. It's like, <gasps> soft tissue and dinosaur bones. It's like, one thing is known. We know when dinosaurs existed. And there's no way that it could have lasted this long. We don't know what it is. We just know that the theory of evolution is right, so... Let's work from there backwards. Others went down the route of speculating that some scientists had tried to create a dinosaur of their own, but something went wrong and the creature ended up being abandoned. With that being said, not much information came from the story, and it was eventually forgotten about. The story made the rounds in 2017, and it wasn't until early 2019 that we got a potential answer for what this creature may have been. One paleontologist said the following after reviewing the photographs. The interesting thing about this discovery is that I don't think it's a hoax. It looks like a real creature and if I'm being honest I think someone is just having fun. In all fairness it does have a slight resemblance to what a theropod dinosaur would look like. But of course we know this isn't the case here. What we're most probably looking at is some type of mammal. Others have suggested this creature belonged to the weasel family, and I can agree with that. Others haven't seen the funny side and have said that things like this shouldn't make the news, whereas other paleontologists have said that it's fine when stories like this make the news, but it's important we set the record straight on what it is, and that what we are seeing here is some type of mammal that hasn't long passed away. One creature that's been put forward for a possible candidate is that of the martin. It's interesting to note as well that many animals that pass away don't look like what they did in life, and this seems to be the case with this creature. As of today, researchers and scientists agree that what we're looking at is some type of modern mammal, most likely a martin. This isn't the only controversial... How do you guys feel? Just a um, eyeball check. How do you guys feel about this? Uh, this this thing here is... And, and I can agree with that. He can agree with that. He's a well-informed thinker. Others haven't seen the funny side and have said that things like this shouldn't make the news. Whereas other paleontologists have said that it's fine when stories like this make the news. But it's important we set the record straight on what it is. Gotta set the record and that straight. What we are seeing here is some type of mammal that hasn't long passed away. What we're seeing here is a mammal. One creature that's been put forward for a possible candidate is that of the martin. Does that look like a martin do you? It's interesting to note as well that many animals that pass away don't look like what they did in life. It's it's important. So hey, look, we know we know how uh, that it's not the dinosaurs can't live this long. We know that. And then uh, we know that we gotta set the record straight. And at, we got to set the record straight and we know that it's a mammal. And so we're going to just, it's, it's this thing, it's this thing. So basically it doesn't matter what you see with your eyeballs. It doesn't matter this what logic says. As of today, researchers and scientists agree that what we're looking at is some type of modern mammal, most likely a Martin. Yep. This isn't the only controversial. 
it's a Martin. So, whatever. Remember the grains of sand thing? Soft tissue dinosaur bones. Oh, and then that thing. But that's a Martin, too. I'll just throw it in the other bin. Uh, really quick. I can't do this because I'm doing the, the live show for YouTube. But, um person says fancy says i try so hard to disprove evolution why how about trying to prove the existence of god so a couple things fancy um you could call it trying hard to disprove evolution i'm presenting the evidence that the that the fairy tale that you believe in uh is a joke and i'm going to keep showing this evidence as long as i have a voice so uh the way that logic works is when you don't have an answer you look at uh different hypotheses like that that's a that's a reptile, uh, dinosaur-looking thing, but they say it's a, um, a mammal. Do I think it's a mammal? No. Does that mean it's a dinosaur? No, but their theory sucks. Uh, the theory of evolution sucks. As far as proving God, uh, I would never say I can prove God because we don't know. We don't know how we got here. We don't know when. We don't know with the process. We all believe something. So uh, to me, logically, a created order would be the handiwork of a creator. That's what I believe. My issue and why I'm attacking evolution is it's taught as fact and it's not a fact. It's a belief and it's a shoddy one. And so if we can just get to a level playing field where people can say, hey, the universe could have vamped into existence and created itself and created the earth and created man and information came from non-information and whatever, it's a possibility. We don't know. We believe it. And you believe that we're in a created order. They're both beliefs. They're both fine. I'll stop doing the show. I will. I'll stop. If you want to get me out of here, everybody can just go. Uh, the idea that we're in a created order and the idea that the universe created itself, they have equal merit, which to me is like that would be like a huge benefit of the doubt for uh, this this theory. But yeah, so I'm not going to provide a proof of God and you're not going to provide a proof of evolution because we don't know either. All we know for sure is about 3,100 years ago, man popped up all around the world at basically the same time reading writing government uh, from there before and anything in the time before is all guesswork your theory my theory we all believe something okay continuing your discovery that's been made in the field of paleontology a few years back a 68 million year old bone from a t-rex was found that had soft tissue inside and right from the get-go this discovery left people with many questions the discovery was made by mary sweetshire a molecular paleontologist at North Carolina State University. The discovery was made in 2005 when her and her team made the incredible discovery. Soft tissue and blood was found inside a Tyrannosaurus rex specimen. Even other scientists were confused as they thought that soft tissue should degrade in less than 1 million years. And here you have a 68 million year old fossil that's still showing soft tissue. However, as of today, new research has suggested that the iron in the dinosaur's body preserved the tissue before it could decay. Crossing. Another incredible dinosaur discovery was made in March 2011. This was when a group of Canadian miners were doing their routine work at an Alberta mine. The group of workers discovered a dinosaur fossil so well preserved that even its skin color was visible. The fossil could be described as a well-preserved dinosaur mummy of a 110 million year old dinosaur. This 18 foot long dinosaur is known as a nodosaur. All the dinosaur fossils that have been found till now consisted of bones only. This is the only dinosaur that's been discovered in such a perfect condition that its bones, armor and the skin are well preserved. This they is found the a lot first more time we're then. able to see a dinosaur exactly as it may have been millions of years ago. The scientists believe that Nodosaur was a herbivore, and it had thick, half a meter long spikes on its skin. The researchers believe the reason why the fossil has been found in such an amazing condition is because it remained buried in the sea for a long time. According to the archaeologists, the body of the Nodosaur was swept away in a flood and ended up in the sea. When it landed on the sea floor, it created an impact crater because of its weight, and as a result it was quickly covered by the sediment. This protected the body from being scavenged and it also prevented the decomposition. So today we have this perfect fossilized body. If you uh, didn't catch that. Let's hear it again. To the archaeologist, the body of the Nodosaur was swept away in a flood and ended up in the sea. I 
this sounds like a hell of a flood. Kind of a flood sweeps a dinosaur into the sea. It's a big, it's a big snake. It's a big snake there. So then, uh, let's get this straight. It was flooded down the river, down the creek, into the sea. And then, as it it went into the sea, it fell in the water, which is exactly what dead things do, is they plummet in the water and at a rate as they as it plummets down it hits the bottom of the ocean like a crater like a ocean dinosaur flood meteor okay so we believe in a fit I mean in my in my version uh, there was a giant flood that killed a lot of the dinosaurs all of them that weren't on the ark and uh, they were then rapidly covered in mud at all places uh, in the world and it would be my scientific prediction that if we start digging underneath the oceans there's going to be fossils everywhere because there would be fossils everywhere because the flood killed everything so in my scenario, a flood covered it in mud. It you know sank down, ended up down there. In their scenario, huge rainstorm washes the giant reptile down the river, who then hurtles through the water and creates a meteor uh, and is buried. How do you guys feel about that? Local serious ass flood. Listen when to this it landed for a long time, this is the first time where it meets along spikes on its skin. The researchers believe the reason why the fossil has been found in such an amazing condition is because it remained buried in the sea for a long time. According to the archaeologist, the body of the nodosaur was swept away in a flood and ended up in the sea. Let me let me just pause when it this. Landed on the, sea. the reason why they have to come up with this bullshit story is there's something mm -hmm. called scavengers, okay? Scavengers were created by the creator, I believe. Don't know that for sure. But they're basically Roombas. They're basically Roombas. And they they work, at, they're programmed as NPC Roombas to clean up. They're the cleanup crew, okay? So you get something that dies and it sits there and decomposes and it sucks for everything. So God created scavengers on land and in the sea. Uh, the land scavengers, you're not supposed to eat. They're unclean. Turns out that's a good rule. How could the Jews have known that? The sea scavengers, you're also not supposed to eat. These are the crustaceans. They sit there and they wait for something that died to get to the bottom, and then they eat it up. Nom, 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 nom. Thank you. You're gone. Roomba done. The reason why they have to come up with this fancy story of the local massive tiny flood that washed the four ton reptile into a meteor that crashed into the ocean floor and was covered is because if it would have just landed on the bottom of the sea, it would have been scavenged. And there isn't a lot of wind. It's not gonna be covered over time. It's just gonna sit there and be, uh, it's gonna be scavenged and be done. This is evidence for the flood. Sorry, be mad. Your story sucks compared to the flood story. The meteor local flood thing is a joke. But this is what you have to do. These, this is the mental gymnastics that you have to do to defend a, a lie, like I said at the beginning of this. Can't ask any questions. Well-informed thinkers would never think this. You would trust the science. Our story's crazy. You know, iron leaking, iron leaking thing. We did it for two years. Science, river comets. can't ask us you can't don't don't do not research it see floyd created an impact crater because of his weight this the body of the nodosaur was swept away in a flood and ended up in the sea when it landed on the sea floor it created ended up in the sea <laughs> oh. i'm just imagining him 
in this current just rolling down down the middle dead middle of the river flood river ending up in the sea into the crater created an impact crater because of its weight and as a result it was quickly covered by the sediment have you guys seen the titanic the movie I'm pretty sure that that was a heavy ass boat. Um, and also is designed to be seaworthy with a bunch of holes, but they were all compromised. And so the boat became much heavier when it was inundated with all of the water. And it, it, went, it dropped thousands of feet to the ground. Ground. The ocean ground. And it, I don't think it meteor crater impact cratered into the earth and disappeared because that's fucking not how it works at all. That's not how any of this works. Immediately, no. Nope. Nope. That's not how it works. Stop forcing me to believe illogical, blatant lies spun in a fairy tale that I can only understand if I'm well informed. That's a joke. That is a joke. If the Titanic meteored underneath the ocean, maybe. Even though the Titanic is a magnitudes of hundreds of times bigger and heavier. No, it's just sitting there. Because that's what happens in water. Okay? There's no ocean comet reptiles. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a fairy tale. Hello, Luke Caverns. Nice to see you, brother. Oh, Nick, uh, Nick the Goose. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. It's a very nice thing for you to say. Um, yeah, if you're new here, I don't know, buckle up. <laughs> this is uh this is the show where the crazy Christian conspiracy theorist, intelligent design advocate, uh, applies his manic brain to the nature of reality with the bias that we've been lied to about everything. So I mean it's gotta be entertaining. If you tune into this, you'd be like, whoa never seen this before uh the focus is <clears throat> debunking the fairy tale that we've been taught and validating the bible that they've taught us is a fairy tale and it's the most fun i've ever had in my life doing anything professionally so thank you everybody for your support on this uh nick enjoy it uh i've got a few of these on my youtube if you guys are interested in my bio click on the picture click on link tree I've got a few of these specific kind of teachings put up there. I think of 65 or something. Um, you can kind of go down the rabbit hole. We've done a lot of science-y things. And then the older stuff is more in the conspiracy vein. But we moved out of that because I have been rehabilitated. I have learned that questioning the state and uh, medical industry, government, um, science, you know, these are um, these are dangerous things that you can't do because you know the government loves you and the people in charge don't lie. They don't lie. They just they just want your children. They just want your children to believe whatever they want you to believe, and they just want you to give them half of your money or more and do whatever they say and not ask any questions. And if you do that, you're a good citizen. And I'm a good citizen. I'm not a contrarian thinker. I am a good boy. All right, Dino Week. Thank you. It's awesome. Okay, uh, what else do we have? I'm going to wrap up for tonight. Uh, I don't think I'm going to come back on you guys for the second show. Um, check out the new video. I just made it uh, showing the soft tissue Mary Schweitzer video. 
uh, we've done the Chinese Dragons with the Hunt Lennox Globe and Marco Polo in video one. And then we did the Suicide of Saul in video two. And then we just did the uh, Mary Schweitzer, a very short 40 second Mary Schweitzer uh, piece. I could, I, it was initially like three and a half minutes and I cut it down and just kept cutting it off until whatever. What You're welcome, TikTok. Here's a 40 second goldfish piece. It's frustrating, but um, I'm probably, I'm, I'm thinking about doing one more with the European dragon stories with St. George and, and, uh, you know, those kind of evidences and, or I'm just going to do a rap video and it's going to be like a one minute version of this, if I can do it or two minute version of this. And then I think I'm gonna move on to simulation or something, but so today's Tuesday. Oh, um, I'm on the red Patriot show. I think is what it's called. It's uh, Scott Kesterson's assistant. Her name is Hannah. She asked me to be on her podcast. I'm on that tomorrow at five Eastern, I believe. And then we're on the shipwreck show on the 11th, which is Friday. So we got two more podcasts coming up, which is cool. So we'll post all those on the Discord as well. And we'd love your prayers that we represent God correctly. So. I haven't played this in a little bit. You guys remember this from the first account? <laughs> yeah, that's what I used to use to get ready for the lives in the first account. You love shipwreck. Yeah, she's uh, she's cool, Lukey Dookie. Thank you. You watch YouTube pretty much all day at work. Just subscribed. Thank you, Jalen. I appreciate that. Yeah, this um, it's a lot of ram. What's hard about kind of what I'm doing is it's uh, it's a combination of just a purge, a download of information. I said on my first TikTok channel, I kind of want to show it. My very first video, I said, we've got a lot to cover. Let's see if I can find that here really quick. Give me a second. Although I don't think it plays the audio. Did we find that out last time? Does anybody remember? work i think it plays Eh, whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i won't do that but in my first video a year and a half ago i said we've got a lot to cover so we're trying to cover it all and i've made it about one sixth of the way through the list so uh, i'm trying to make the one minute poppy digestible videos to get the information out on tiktok and then i'm doing the longer form content on here and going to youtube and then we're going to be launching a podcast soon we've got two things coming up we're gonna launch a podcast and we're still gonna do VOR Raw where I can talk about everything. So we're working on those, um, but we're just trying to figure out the application, I'm trying to get as much of this out as I can, uh, help get people um, to see what's going on. And then another big thing is, uh, you know, there's a lot of Christians who are, are really questioning the system, but they're believing some really dangerous and incorrect things as well, I believe. So I'm trying to disciple Christians in this like information war because we have to be smart we can't be representing jesus and trying to tell people about the living god and then be just totally blatantly wrong about other things it's a bad look bad form so whatever i played my outro music i didn't out so i'm gonna out now it is luke thanks for being here just need to go to youtube and podcast i appreciate your work thank you just just us i appreciate that Thoughts on Ron Wyatt? Um, I like Ron Wyatt. Um, I think he gets a bad rap. I think he was sensationalist and he made some, I think there were some mistakes for sure. Um, but I think there was some good stuff there too. So um, I think his Sinai discovery was very valid and has been validated by other people since. And I've done a huge series on it. Um, so I like what Ron Wyatt did. But again, some of it was a little bit off and uh, the system loves to tear apart when we're wrong and really make us look bad. So I think he was guilty of a couple things and the system just ate him up. So, all right, that's all. Thank you everybody for being here.
Thank you, VOR family, for keeping this going. Love you all. End transmission.